lights. Fire. Fire. Episode 125. What an overstimulating week. Oh, my God. If you're a sports fan, right now I'm drinking um, a Bloody Mary made by, well, it's my waste management glass, which is the golf tournament in Phoenix. It was on TV all weekend. I bet a sweet $100 on Rory, and he just shit the bed. No, the Canadians did well. Uh, Nick yeah. Taylor, Adam Hadwin, yeah. Scotty Scheffler won. That guy's rock solid, though. Yeah. Like on the 16th hole, he had like a 10-foot putt for uh, par. Yep. No problem. Because yep. the other guy, Nick, could have caught up by another. He could have been even Steven, but then Nick missed his. So, boom. Scotty anyway, I know a lot of people. Well, you're going to talk about live Scotty golf a little bit later. But the vodka Scotty in. Scotty believes in uh, Jesus and Waffle House. So. Scotty likes Jesus and Waffle House. I'm with him on both, but I also like beer and wings and bars. In addition to what is original, I'm with them. Did you see all the Canadians? I did see all the Canadians, and they wore those Monty outfits, which was great in the morning, but then it got hot, hot. Yeah. And they didn't they didn't wimp out. No. They kept them on the whole time because there were like four Canadians out there running around doing great. Yeah. Thanks to Live Golf, there's some open <laughs> spots. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> no, doesn't. Adam Hadwood's been in there the whole time. Nick mm-hmm. Taylor, kind of younger, newer. Mm-hmm. Um. I forget the other two that were creeping around. Corey Connors. Corey Connors. Mm-hmm. And then some other guy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is my friend Dax, the drummer from Cheap Trick. This is his um, family's vodka. It's called Rockin', Rockin'. And I love the emblem. It's a skull with two guitars. Very cool. It's very fancy, and Rockin it's smooth. Vodka. Looking for an elegant vodka that will elevate your cocktail experience? Rockin's creators, with their extensive tenure in entertainment, Da, da, da. I have discovered a versatile gluten-free rockin' vodka. I can give some to my sister. 100% distilled from sugar cane. Nice. Yeah. It's Great. delicious. Great. So I'm drinking that. And a bush light from <laughs> where? The state of Missouri. Ooh. Winners of the Super Bowl. I don't want to get too far into it because sports can be polarizing. It's polarizing, to say the least. And I have a lot of friends. And... uh uh, co-workers and fans and family that are Philly people. It was a tough day for them. It was a great game. Let's say you didn't have a dog in the fight. It was a, it was a great Super Bowl compared to many. Same I won a side-by-square in the family square thing, nice. which pays hundred uh, for the final one, $185. My entry was only 100 nice. Boom, $85 profit. Mm-hmm. Nice. Lewis won a whole square outright, 600 bucks. Shut up. I know he's never oh. won before. I can't even call him yet. He'll be too overstimulated. I have to give it like at least 24. <laughs> um, yeah, that's uh, that's all I'll say about the Super Bowl. But congratulations, everybody. Um, it was really well. And, then, and, the tra- and the Kelsey boys. Yeah. Yeah. Mom. Had to sit next to Goodell. Yeah, you got to <laughs> sit next to Roger Goodell the whole time. Like, why am I your trapped keep? Why are you my keeper? <laughs> If I was that lady, uh, the mom of those boys, I'd be like, get me away from this cheese whiz. How far, How? Do, what do I got to do to get a good seat that's not with you? Right. How do I do that? I'll just go sit with anybody because she doesn't care. It could be Eagles fans or Kansas City fans. Yeah. She's got a kid on each team. Fine, put me anywhere. Yep. Just get me away from, oh, I can't stand him. <laughs> um, what are we tasting before we get to everything? Well, we have Snyder's, one of my favorite pretzels, has now gone a little off-road with a jalapeno ranch. Nice. Yeah, I don't, today I might go to Kentucky Fried Chicken and get the, uh, the they have the, um, what do you call it? Chicken pot pie. It's new. Oh, chicken pot pie is probably my favorite thing in the whole world. Pretzels made you think of that. Yeah. Mm. Um, no. No. I don't like these. Oh, no. Okay. Not even worth the calories. Oh. Regular pretzels are great. And they're from Pennsylvania. Well, I love Snyder's of Hanover, Pennsylvania. I love the real pretzels. Uh-huh. But Jalapeno Ranch? Nope. No. Then do it. No. Okay. No. That's a solid no. Solid. This is for the sweet tooth people. Twix is now making cookie dough flavor. Gross. I like Twix. I don't know. Let's see. No, 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 no. No. Oh. Too sweet. I mean, you just took it over the top. My mom. Good for my mom. Oh, my God. God. I'm going to need to drink a beer after that. (laughs) (laughs) Last thing we're trying. Chick-fil-A avocado lime ranch dressing. 
Now, full disclosure, I think there's cilantro in here, which is going to make me want to vomit, but I'm going to do it anyway, in case you're thinking if you're at a Chick-fil-A, and I know people don't like Chick-fil-A for various reasons. Uh, mm -mm. No. No. Too limey. Too cilantro-y. More of Dex's vodka. Just more vodka. Yeah, it raised all that. It raised all that. Um, um, oh, and then my friend Clark. Clark's from Portland, mm -hmm. Oregon. And he said he just missed me. So he sent me a little bit of love from Oregon. This is so, this is not a joke. This Stop. is, I'm serious. It's a Sasquatch field guide. Oh my God. It's a Bigfoot field guide. Identify tracking and sighting North America's relict hominoid. Whoa. Mm hmm. And it's got how you identify, it's got footprints, it's got distinguishing features. His ears are hidden on the side of his head. Wow. Flat face, broad shoulders, long limbs, high crotch. You know, my mom wouldn't know how to buy him jeans. That's no. all she would ever yell at my brothers Jeez. out loud in Sears. How do they fit in the crotch? Oh, my God. <laughs> Stop, Mom. Stop. Um, a bear is five to six feet. Sasquatch, seven to ten. Whoa. Bear can weigh anywhere from 150 to 700. Sasquatch, 600 to 1,000. Colors, bears, black, brown, cinnamon, white. And... I guess the Sasquatch doesn't does not come in cinnamon, black brown. What? But then it's got all this stuff about how to cast a track. Like I'm not that scientific. I can't do that. Other people need to be doing that. I think we should do a video. Footprints. And then all the, this is not. They're not kidding. I can't wait to read the whole thing. It's what they eat. Oh my god. Anyway. And then he he sent me the Clark. All, I'm just gonna say for straight out, these are going to my mom because um, Where are they? no, I'll taste one. But my mom, it's marshmallows and chocolate. It's Bigfoot, 100 percent Pacific Northwest Sasquatch poop. Oh. Yeah, get it. Nice. Yeah, um, but it's adorable. It's from Coos Bay, Oregon. Yeah. Oregon's very cool. Oregon is extremely strange, um, but they like it like that. They like to be weird, and good for them. Stay weird. Isn't that their slogan? Keep Portland weird or something? Something like that. I think that's Austin. I think it's Portland, too. They stole it? Mm-hmm. Okay. I think Portland had it first. Okay. I don't know. I'll look it up. Okay. Um, now, more importantly than the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. um, we have to have a brief discussion about the UFOs. Yeah. It's getting weird. And... If they attack before my special is released on Amazon, <laughs> I'm going to personally fight back. Oh, you have a week. I have a week. Yeah. I have a gun. When does your, I'm armed. When does your special come out? The special is released on February 21st. The trailer is out. Yes. Um, but seriously, all kidding aside, um, I'm not kidding, though. If they ruin, if that happens the day, special. if they ruin my special, <laughs> I'm going to have a, a super, super wave of anger. Because Lewis says, <laughs> Lewis, the first Chinese balloon, he texted me. He's like, well, it's your thing is finally coming true. I'm like, my what? He's like, the aliens. I'm like, I hadn't even thought about that. I'm thinking it's drone wars. Yeah. It's the one time I'm the most practical person that I know. Everybody else is like, they're coming, aliens, we're screwed. I, why would aliens be sending unmanned things? Here's the other thing. Lewis said, well, how do you know that they're coming and in bad faith, name a group of people that have entered other people's areas and were lovely. Hmm. Never. Nope. The, the, the pilgrims get over here. The Indians are like, hey, you want to have a meal? And we killed them all. <laughs> right. I mean, right. I, it, let's put it this way, Lewis. I told him, if let's say I woke up in the middle of the night mm -hmm. and there's a UFO with lights beaming down over the top of my house, mm -hmm. I'm going to be scared shitless. I don't find that exciting. I, don't, I find it terrifying. I don't have a basement, as we know, which I should because of sure. tornadoes. Yep. I might have to go buy one of those things you put in the ground. You Maybe were, I'll do that because of the aliens. But you were given poor advice. I was given, I was given some <laughs> very poor advice by a, a hillbilly that I trusted drunk in a bar. That's on me. Yep. That's, That's on me. That's on you. You really couldn't have more salt on this Bloody Mary than I've done. I could just. It, I, a, think, I think it goes down to. It does. It's really what I like most about Bloody Marys, the olive and the salt. Yeah. Anyway, um, now there's three that have been shot down. 
Why isn't the Pentagon coming out and saying exactly what the hell these things are? Then there's all this shit on Twitter. There's a video of it going down a highway in Montana, the thing that they recovered. What, if this is a UFO, why is it the size of a small car? I just pictured something like Star Trek where there's a holodeck and room for entertaining. Yeah. There's no, are there, and then go, Lou goes, well, how do you know there weren't aliens in it? I said, I don't know that, Lou, but it's said unmanned. I can only go with what I read. But it is weird that this week, all of a sudden, we are shooting shit out of the sky, and they chased it from one of them from on Super Bowl Sunday yeah. from Lake Michigan up to Lake Huron. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's crossing between Canada, and then Lou goes, "Well, we need one in South America to make it legitimate." Oh, what? <laughs> How can you put rules on aliens, Lou? If you think they're aliens, what, I think there was one in South America. You get the the Mounties, uh, that's, oh my God, the guy in Missouri, our governor, why well, he already said that. He, he's like, don't worry, I've called the police. How far do you think a cop gun shoots, you jackass? Just, uh, he's so, I can't, I can't with him. Um, uh, so I don't know. What do you guys think? You think it's aliens? You think it's drones? The other thing I threw out to my brother and to Lewis, what if it's Elon? He should be arrested, but who's going to arrest him? The government's doing business with him. I mean, right. and that's what my brother said. No, the government's done too much business with, with Elon, with tax credits and stuff. They wouldn't give him that kind of technology. How do we know he doesn't have it? I think if it was Elon, he would have unveiled it on Super Bowl Sunday. That he, you think Elon would have unveiled it? Well, I remember in Columbia, Missouri, like a year ago, two years ago, it might have been during COVID, people saw this V of lights. And there are videos all over Twitter. My brother and his wife saw it. Totally real. Well, those were drones from Texas. Yes. But the Midwest people all panicked and ran in their basements in their tornado shelters thinking it was true aliens. That was Elon. Right. I don't know. What do you guys think? We will stay tuned. Speaking of the Super Bowl, um, my friend Brian asked me this this morning. What's up with the Jesus act? Dorf asked me. Yeah. yeah. I said, Dorf, here's the thing. I'm going to talk about it on the podcast, so you should listen, which <laughs> I'm sure he does not. Um, yeah. It's basically the Hobby Lobby guy. What? Yep. No. Yep. Now, if you watch sports, these things have been going on for a while during football, especially during the playoffs. Right. I don't know about other sports because I don't watch other sports right now because football is the only thing on that I like. Well, hockey, but... People don't put those kind of hats in hockey. No, or golf. <laughs> no, or golf. No. no. There's enough Jesus in golf. Um, this is what's going on with that. In between star studded advertisers, a whole lot of football, blah, blah, the He Gets Us campaign to promote Jesus and Christianity. Christianity. Now, here's the weird thing. Mm-hmm. A couple that I've seen seem to imply mm-hmm. that immigrants that are coming over should be taken care of because it's part of mankind. That's the message I got. But the, which is, because then they compare it to Jesus and Mary and not having anywhere to have it. Jesus was an illegal immigrant or whatever, an immigrant or whatever. And then they show people getting rounded up in the back of a truck. It seems very pro save the immigrants, which I think if it's the Hobby Lobby guy, I don't associate the super Christian right with that. And there's a lot of people saying that's a trick. These ads are trickery. This is a great thing about being, this is, this is the great thing about being Catholic. To me, that's all just outside of us. Like, I'm like, I don't know what you're all doing, but you you sort yourselves out what kind of Christian you are. I mean, I, I already got a thing. I'm sticking with it in it to win it. I already put all my money in the Catholic slot machine. I'm not moving machines now. Um, this is the thing. And it's associated to the core group is somewhere in Missouri. No. I know. It's always my state with the weird. You guys. I know. I know. We're very strange. Um, uh, uh, the he, to, to many, this spots will be nothing new. The he Gets Us content has been peppering TV screens, billboards, and social media feeds since the national launch in 2022. The campaign is arresting, portraying a pivotal figure of Christianity as an immigrant, a refugee, right, a radical, an activist for women's rights. Okay, guess who's not an activist? The Hobby Lobby guy. No. He won't even, he He's won't include birth control in any of the health plans and all that. Um, 
which by the way, oh, I'm not going to get into that. It's just no, too okay. political. But you're right, all right. No. But I think it should be part of insurance. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> whatever you are facing, Jesus faced too, the campaign complains. It's getting noticed. One of the campaign videos titled The Rebel netted 122 million views on YouTube in 11 months. It's a natural fit with the NFL, whose games have long contained symbols of religion. Players often pray, pray on the field and point to the heavens after a touchdown. But after certain details, it's got alarm bells going off. Those, the two groups, um, of they're trying to get young people um, and those skeptical of religion. Okay. It's like, remember that Scientology one where they're like, don't you want to get to know yourself better or some crap? Right. Where you're like, you're just trying to get curious people to call that number. Some of, the ca- some of the campaign's major donors and its holding companies have ties to a conservative political arm, political aims, and far-right ideologies that appear at odds with the campaign's inclusive message. This is why it's trickery. Yes. To be careful. The chain of influence behind He Gets Us can be followed through public records and information on the campaign's own website. Most of it's anonymous, though. The Hobby Lobby guy so far is the only guy that's fessed up and said, fine, I gave a shit ton of money. It's probably my fault for all those years buying wrapping paper there. It's good wrapping paper. It is. It's but I paper. stopped once he was mean to the workers during COVID. Because right. he made them come in or fire them or some horse shit. I don't remember that. I just went, you know what, dude? People don't have to agree or disagree, but you shouldn't fire them over it. Especially look who's working at Hobby Lobby. Right. Mostly older women. Right. I'm always amused at the one by my house because somebody really hates them and they go in and take all the letters and rearrange everything and they say mean things about Trump. They rearrange the letters that they sell, yeah. like the initial letters. I go in there sometimes just to see what they've spelled out. <laughs> <laughs> it's not me. I didn't do it. I would no, never do it. No. Here's what um, the Hobby Lobby co-founder David Green claims to be a big contributor to the campaign. Uh, Hobby Lobby has been at the center of several legal controversies, including the support of anti-LBGTQ legislation, also uh, allowing companies to deny medical coverage for contraception on the basis of religious beliefs. Also, how about you stole all the antiquities and had to return them all? You bought them and you knew they were stolen. Yep. And then we had to come and go, give us a shit back. Don't be a liar. Nope. And he did it, but only t- not until they got caught. I don't know if it was this David Greed, but it was the, somebody in charge of Hobby Lobby. Um, we want to say, we being a lot of different, that he gets us, Green said. Jesus understands us. He loves who we hate. He what? loves who we hate. Come on. Why are you hating anybody? Right. You do, you I do. think we have to let the public know and create a movement. It does not list donors on its website. Funding for He Gets Us comes from a diverse group of individuals and entities with a common goal of sharing Jesus' authentic story. Okay. That makes no sense. Don't most people know Jesus' story? Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. I mean... That's why they send people into third world nations where people don't have cable yet. They're like, can you go tell them about Jesus? So they may not have heard. <laughs> if you're watching the Super Bowl, yeah. <laughs> come on. You've heard. Um, You've got the whiff. Be assured we are not left or right or a political organization of any kind. We are also not affiliated with any particular church or denomination. Well, you, I think you are right if the Hobby Lobby guy's in. Um, if he's right. one of the biggest donors, um, I'm going to keep going. The information does not appear to be, oh, meanwhile, we generate, oh, wow. He gets us, has chosen not to separate, uh, statements of, to not have our own separate statements of belief. Each participating church in ministry, so churches are given in, will typically have its own language. Meanwhile, we generally recognize the Lusane covenant. What is that? as a reflect, reflective of the spirit and the intent of this movement and churches that partners with explorers from He Gets Us affirm the Lusane Covenant. The information does not appear to be listed anywhere on the main He Gets Us. Here it is. In 1974, Lusane Covenant is an important unifying document in evangelical Christian churches. While the Lusane movement, I may not be saying that right. L-A-U-S-A-N-N-E. It was started by the prominent evangelical Christian leader, Billy Graham. I mean, come on. Oh, come on. Documents and decisions that have come out of the movement summits have decried the idolatry of disorderly, disordered sexuality 
and focused heavy on the impact of the devil and sins on national cultures. Some people say the campaign is not authentic. A lot of times when you look, people look at Christianity, and unfortunately they see what they see is much more hypocritical, judgmental, and discriminatory. We are trying to unify people around confounding love and forgiveness of Jesus. Well, some of the he gets us messages make oblique references to cancel, cancel culture, which raises a red flag for some who seem the term is highly political and a staple of conservative rhetoric. One message uses a slogan, Jesus was canceled. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> if you're saying Jesus was killed, that's one thing. Yes. Uh, yes, if you're a Christian, you believe that. But canceled, if he was canceled, we wouldn't be talking about him 2,000 years later. Right. What a dumbass thing to say. He was canceled. No? You know who was canceled? The other two guys on the cross that nobody knows what their names were. I only know one because of the, of the grade school, St. Dismas. And that was the claim to fame of St. Dismas, the grade school. Right. We got the other guy on the cross. Right. Like, I don't even know who got the other guy. There's we're some other Catholic two. grade school. And they, we're number two. We're number two. <laughs> <laughs> other Christians have criticized the, um, wait, when it comes to crucifixion and canceled culture, I don't see much to compare, writes Joseph, somebody a Christian for a Christian publication. Furthermore, imagining Jesus is a political is itself a political decision. Correct. You don't know. He could have been super far right or super far left. Right. According to what he's saying, I'd say left. If you look at what he says. Probably. Um, they think, a lot, a lot of the super Christians think the ads are too vague. I think it's a trick. Because um, conservative pundit Charlie Kirk took aim at the campaign saying those involved have been taken for a ride by these woke tricksters. No, they're trying to get the kids that agree with that, and then you trick them. Right. They're the ones tricking people. Yes. Charlie. Charlie. <laughs> Charlie. So, by the way, here's how much they cost. Um, uh, 30 second spots during the game were running for $7 million. Wow. Yet they invest, plan on investing a billion dollars in spreading their message. So, you know what? We'll see if it actually leads people to Jesus, and if it does, what path will they ultimately be encouraged to take? Beware, kids. Where the children? Beware. <laughs> yeah, most people my age have already chosen a, what we're going with. Sometimes I've said to my mom, do you ever think, what if, what if the Catholics aren't right? She goes, oh, I can't think that now, Kathleen. I'm 75. I mean, I put all my money in the slot machine. I'm like, exactly, yeah. Mom. Update! I don't have any queen news. I got nothing. Every, well, Super Bowl, you have aliens. There's a lot going on this week. There's a lot, a lot of crazy shit. A lot of crazy um, update. Bed, Bath, and Beyond. What's one of the reasons you termites listen to this podcast? Because nobody else is going in depth on nobody, Bed, Bath, and Beyond. Nobody is psycho it, about Bed, it announces Bath, and 87 more closures. Oh. Yep. 87 additional stores, the announcement comes after a beleaguered home good chain said it had defaulted on its loans. So many towels, not enough wet bodies. No. No. Nope. The company also plans to close five Bye Bye Baby stores, as well as all of its Harmony Beauty locations. They said the closures are being done to increase efficiency as the company works with advisors to consider multiple paths as the retailer tries to turn the business around. The store, this store fleet reduction expands the company's ongoing closure program of approximately 150 lower producing Bed Bath and Beyond banner stores. We will update all stakeholders. And then listen to this. This is a follow-up article to that. You know it would be interesting if they could get a liquor license? If Bed Bath & Beyond could get a liquor license and you turned it into a bar within it, there's so much space. Right. Then, you know, people have a few beers, wine or whatever, and they're like, <laughs> you know, maybe I will go get that new toaster. Right. It's just sitting right there. Then, then you could have you could have workers come by the bar and just show people stuff. <laughs> have you seen this new vacuum? You, you got to be creative when you're this far in the hole, especially can't. if you're going to go for it. 
no, no returns. Yeah, sure. Store credit. <laughs> Store credit. <laughs> Store credit. <laughs> it's not electronic. Yeah. <laughs> this was uh, last week. Bed Bath & Beyond's uh, stock sank as much as 45% on Tuesday morning. It was halted for a, uh, a day after the embattled retailer announced plan. They're going to try to raise $1 billion through an equity offering. They had gained 92% during the previous session ahead of the announcement on Monday at a re- recent rally and near bank, the nearly bankrupt company gained momentum. Shares of the retailer heavily shorted with short interest. I don't understand all that shorting stocks. I'll have to ask my brother. So they're going to try to raise a um, billion dollars by closing <laughs> stores and they're not thinking creatively. No, they're not. Wouldn't it be fun if you were going to go like, hey, Let's go have happy hour at Bed Bath & Beyond. I think I might want some new kitchen stuff. Yeah. But I'm not sure. But if I'm sitting at the bar, it's, it's like in Vegas where they used to come around, that lady would come out and say, ah, cigarettes, yo-yo. She always had a yo-yo. yo-yo. I'm like, who's the drunk that wants to light up yo-yo? Yeah, yeah they, well, I did. Yeah. I mean, I bought, bought them every time. But I was the only person. It was a little embarrassing. <laughs> um, but then you have people come around the bar and go, I know you think your toaster's cool, but have you seen this one? And it's, it's a newer, right. It's a, right, like the stuff you sit in your house that's just old and you don't think about it being old. I don't know. <laughs> Moving on, update for my mom. Oh, Vicki Madigan can relax in Sarasota. They told me, by the way, my dad goes, well, we've been invited to a Super Bowl party. I said, who invited you? He goes, I can't remember, but I know she has a corned beef. I said, mom, do you remember? <laughs> No, but he's right. Whoever it is is having corned beef. And I'm oh like, well, God. good luck with that. <laughs> yep. Wholesale egg prices have collapsed. Why consumers may soon see relief. This is all for you, Mom. <laughs> oh, thank God I don't have to hear about this anymore. Do you know how much eggs are? No, Mom. Because I'm going to know because you're going to tell me. I have egg beaters because I'm on the road all the time. And when I came home, the box of egg beaters is still good. Yes. Wholesale egg prices have cratered in recent weeks, meaning consumers may seen, soon see relief, but the dynamics of egg pricing from the wholesale to the retail, in addition to other factors, means it's not a sure thing in the short term. <laughs> My mom's not going to want to hear that. Prices fell to 261 per dozen on Monday, a 52% decrease from the peak of 543 on December 19th. 47% decrease from the beginning of 2023. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Now there's a big article in the article because it's the flu outbreak and it gets very, very complicated mm-hmm. um, where they're talking about the U.S. Consumer Price Index. And I don't oh. think this podcast wants to get into hard things like no, that. No, 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 no. I'm just telling you for now. You can call other Kathleen Madigan. What? You can call other Kathleen Madigan. You can call the other Kathleen Madigan yeah. who's very good with um, money and things about money. Math. 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 Yes. A very nice person. I'm sure she'd tweet her. She'll tweet you back. I promise. Update! <laughs> oh, one of my little traders is in so much trouble. <laughs> Rioter who paraded Confederate flag through the U.S. Capitol on January 6th is sentenced. Now, I think the guy with the Confederate flag is about as famous as the shaman. Out of the whole day, yeah. those two and the guy in Pelosi with his feet on Pelosi's desk there were like five standouts yes. where they just did more than the normal person. This is what kills me, though, and I've often wondered this. The man who marched around the U.S. Capitol on January 6, 2021, waving a Confederate battle flag that he also used to threaten a pl- uh, black police officer was sentenced to three years behind bars. Kevin Seafried, 53, again, 50s, my group, snapping a whole group of snapping turtles. Yeah. And tur- <laughs> I, when I say turtles, I mean old people. Turtles. And they are snapping turtles, literally. They, Because you know why by 53? If you don't have it together by now, it's super duper last call. Yeah. That's why. That's why I always want my pilot to be in their 50s. Right. Because they're successful and they want to retire. You're not going to crash that plane if you want your retirement. No. You've worked so hard to get all that money saved up. Right. Anyway. Kevin Seafried, 53 years old, teared up before U.S. District Judge Trevor McFadden in Washington, D.C. courtroom. The judge told him that bringing the flag into one of our nation's most sacred halls was outrageous. I never, want to send, I never wanted to send a message of hate, Seafried told the judge. Uh, the Delaware man, th- you're from the North. 
You were on the winning team. What are you doing? You're not even Southern. <laughs> Jesus, God. It kills me when I drive. Like, I do gigs up in New Hampshire and Vermont. You get in the back-ass woods out there. There's Confederate flags. Mm-hmm. You you were on the winning team. What more do I need for you to, to be? I, unless there's Southerners that moved up there. But I have known a million Southerners. I've never known as one Southerner in my life, a Texan or a Georgian or anybody to go, I'm moving to New Hampshire. Right. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't even think they would. I can't really tell you totally where it's at. It's up there in that corner. Even when I'm in it, I don't know where New I'm England. at. Right, New England. That's a big grouping, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a lot of New England. The Delaware man breached the Capitol with his son, Hunter Seafried. <laughs> he was, Hunter was sentenced in October to two years in prison. Both have been found guilty last June of charges including obstruction and official uh, of an official proceedings. Photographs of the elder Seafried with his flag shocked many Americans in the aftermath of the attack on Congress. The pro-slavery symbol has never been openly flown in the Capitol in the nation's history. No, because they had attacked the nation. <laughs> Whatever. I'm not going to get it. Um, he's been sentenced. This guy, the dad who carried the flag, three years in prison. At one point, he used the flag as a weapon against a uh, Capitol cop, Eugene Goodman, who faced off against a mob of Donald Trump supporters by himself and successfully diverted them away. Oh, that's the guy who tricked him. Yep. Yeah, and he kept going, follow me, and he mm-hmm. used himself as bait, mm-hmm. and they all chased him. He testified in court that this guy tried to push him away by jabbing the flagpole towards him. He was saying things like, fuck you, I'm not leaving. Where are the members at? Where are they counting votes? Seafree's lawyer stated in court documents that as a high school dropout who grew up in an abusive household, <laughs> Seafree was not aware of the hateful message the flag sent. <laughs> oh God, he was taught that the flag. Fire. He was taught that the flag was a symbol of an idealized view of Southern Stop. life and Southern heritage. You're in Delaware. I thought it was pretty. Well, you could say if you're in the back ass woods of South Carolina you, that you thought all this. Well, at least you're in the South. Lacking in education, we didn't grade, and lacking even average intellectual camp ca- intellectual capacity, Mr. Seafried did not appreciate the complex and for many painful history behind the behind the government flag. <laughs> they were not affiliated. The FBI did not affiliate it with any that they're not affiliated with any other far right groups. Um, <laughs> he noted that after the fallout from the Capitol attack, his wife had left him. so he's gonna go to prison for three years probably out in a year and a half that'll put him at age 55 and he will not have a wife and his son will be mad because his son had to go to jail too happy times moving on news this is crazy and i don't know why every single nightly news cnn fox i don't know why no one is interviewing this man because it's all this is real how did a seismologist predict the Turkey earthquake three days before it? He nailed it. I didn't know that. Yeah. And Lewis goes, <laughs> so I read this to Lou. And I go, I, I go, did you see the seismologist that predicted the Turkey earthquake? He goes, well, they've always had a lot of psychics that said things and it didn't happen. I go, psychics? <laughs> psychics. <laughs> he goes, did you say psychic? I said seismologist. <laughs> He goes, oh, well, you know, because I, I like psychics and I believe some of the stuff they say, but with the earthquakes, they don't seem... I'm like, shut up, Lou. Shut up. Wrong. No. A Dutch researcher predicted... This is all on YouTube. And his, and his videos are post... They're dated when he did them. Right. And he's explaining why. He's explaining everything. I don't get why this guy isn't like... Pull to the why is he making his own goddamn YouTube videos? Like this right. guy can help everybody. Right. A Dutch researcher predicted that an earthquake would hit the region, highlighting with an almost exact precision the epicenter of the quake that would strike soon. A Dutch expert published a tweet on his Twitter account three days before the earthquake in Turkey on Monday, predicting a powerful earthquake that would happen imminently in Turkey. He even attached an aerial photograph and marked the area where it would happen. Does he do this for a living? Yeah, he's a seismologist. Oh. But, you know, it's, it's just Frank over in Office B. And nobody's really like, hey, Frank's fun at lunch. <laughs> but, yeah, well, Frank knows shit. Other yeah. Frank is drawing conclusions. So I used to do a joke in my act 100 years ago. The easiest job in the whole world would be seismologist because you don't have to predict anything. All you do is confirm it. 
Every time there's an earthquake, like in California, they would go, we go live to UCLA, UCLA Seismology Center. There'd just be two guys sitting there making 150 grand and go, yeah, we had an earthquake. <laughs> sure did. Probably have some more. Probably not as big. I don't know. We'll be sitting right here making 150 G kids. And uh, yeah, the machine said it's a, it was a 5.3. That's what our machines like. But finally, this guy, Frank Hogerbeats. Uh, that's Dutch seismologist Frank Hogerbeats, who works for the Solar System Geometry Survey in the Netherlands, predicted the earthquake in Turkey on February 3rd. Wow. He said... He said, sooner than later, there will be a 7.5 earthquake. He even predicted the amount wow. in this region. And then he pinpoints it on a map on his Twitter feed. And he's got videos. We all need to follow him. The, yes, everybody needs to follow. He's at H-O-G-R-B-E. Especially, like, if you're put in California or Missouri, there's a big fault line. We'll put it in the notes. Yeah. Wow. Um. The SSGS describes itself on Twitter as a research institute for monitoring ge um, geomet geometry between celestial bodies related to seismic, seismic activity. Hmm. That sounds hard. Yeah, I don't know. After Hogarth's predictions went viral, he reacted to the earthquake and said, as I stated earlier, sooner than later this would happen in this region similar to the years 115 Whoa. and 526. He's going back that far. Mm -hmm. These earthquakes were always preceded um, by a critical planetary geometry as we had on 4, 5 February. Hmm. Right, I don't know what that means, but I trust Frank. <laughs> Frank's If I'm in charge of this institute, Frank's immediately <laughs> promoted. Totally. Yeah, <laughs> and I'd give, him five, I'd give him two months vacation. He probably wouldn't even take it. Nope. After multiple aftershocks <laughs> in the earthquake were felt throughout the larger region, Hogerbeats gave his explanation for the aftershocks. The large earthquakes in central Turkey have caused a significant change in the stress distribution throughout the region with seismic activity down to Palestine as a result. Clearly, the region is resettling. Oh it's crazy that... Why do I have to find this crap buried... And then Lou thinks I'm talking about a psychic and my phone calls don't go right. Nobody cares. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Nobody cares. I love psychic, I can't All right, this is the stupidest story. But when I saw it, I thought it was bugs and I almost vomited. Mm -hmm. 700 pounds of acorns found stuffed by woodpeckers inside the walls of a California home. What? 700 pounds. I thought they were like beetles. I didn't yeah. realize it was acorns. Woodpeckers stuff 700 pounds of <laughs> acorns inside a California home. You know what they are? They're doomsday preppers. They're doomsday preppers. The yeah. woodpeckers yes. are. There's a woodpecker that lives over in the woods over here, and I hear it all the time. And he's so precise, it actually sounds like a construction drill. Wow. Yeah, and I kept thinking, my friend Avi does construction things around here sometimes. And I thought, I wonder if Avi's drilling something. No, nope. it's a woodpecker. Burn. Yeah, a pair of California woodpeckers are surely are surely crushed after a pest control technician on a routine call recently found their massive trove of acorns cleverly stashed in the walls of a California home. The Sonoma County homeowners called on Nick Castro, owner of Nick's Extreme Pest Control, where they spotted worms coming from a bedroom wall. Oh, oh, God. That's no. like oh, Amityville horror shit. Yeah. I'd leave. I, I'll be at the Marriott Courtyard. Somebody go over there. I can't. <laughs> I'll, be at the I'll be at the courtyard. Uh, uh, they turned out to be mealworms feasting on an incredible horde of acorns oh. believed to be amassed by a pair of aptly named acorn wood woodpeckers. It was really strange. I'd never seen worms with acorns before, the gut pest guy said. But the weirdness was just beginning. After making a small four-inch square hole in the wall, the acorns began spilling out. That alone wouldn't be terribly unusual, but they just kept coming out. It was pretty incredible to see the amount. He estimates there were at least 700 pounds of acorns collected over the past two to five years. Often woodpeckers store acorns on the outside of homes, sometimes in rain gutters, but rarely do they put them inside. In this case, he discovered the birds dropped their treasures through a hole in the chimney and entered the attic through a separate hole to feast on their stash. 
As they dropped from the attic, the tens of thousands of acorns gathered from several nearby oak trees filled the cavity of the walls. This odd but unusual find took things to a whole other level for the pest guy who's been doing it more than 20 years. On a scale of 1 to 10, this is a 10. It's a 1 in a million chance to find this something this significant. I expected to find a few handfuls, but nothing like this. They spent three days extracting them. Oh Eight big garbage bags that were so heavy we could barely pick them up. The acorns were thrown away as they were covered in droppings and bits of fiberglass from the walls. Like, oh, Chimneys? Weird things can happen if you have a chimney. Yeah. I don't have a real chimney. It's a gas fireplace. I Sometimes I wish I had a real fireplace, but I also know weird things can happen. Yeah. Squirrels. Bats. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Lots of bats. Mm-hmm. Moving on. Whew. Oh, I skipped. Holy shit, they found it. Yeah. Sorry. I that too. Sorry, that's after updates. You know what? My things got out of order. I got too distracted down There's there. A lot going on. A lot going on this weekend. Yeah. Um, this is crazy cool. <laughs> and where do you see the picture of it in the yeah. notes? Yeah. Amateur detectorist finds stunning gold necklace linked to Henry VIII. Whoa. Boom. Nice. It is, and it's got, um, his initials and shit on it. Whoa. It was such. It was a find of such magnitude. The amateur detectors who discover it was at a loss for worlds, and the expert who unraveled its mysteries spent two years reaching researching it. The pendant features the symbols of Tudor King Henry VIII and his wife Catherine of Aragon. Oh. The only, one of the ones he did not kill. Right. On a chain composed of seventy-five links attached by an enameled suspension link in the form of. Uh, of a hand. The first of Henry's six wives, Catherine married Henry in 1509. So it's like this gold chain with this heart thing. Uh I don't need to use their um, explanation, but Charlie uh, Clark is the guy who did it. He he unearthed it in 2019, but they're just telling people about it. They probably had to get it somewhere safe. Wow. Um, This, I don't even know how much it will be worth. And they're, they're, They'd handed it over to the British Museum, carried out scientific um, analysis to determine whether it was indeed part of the pendant, and it is indeed part of the pendant. I mean, I wonder, the object has just come out of the ground out of almost nowhere. We've got an opportunity to, sub- to study it. People say it's like winning the lottery, but people win the lottery and don't find the crown jewels, do they? <laughs> <laughs> um, he wants to use the money for whatever it's worth to pay for his four-year-old son's ed- education. That's insane. That's awesome. Where do you see the picture of it in the notes? It's beautiful, and it's in perfect condition. I mean, you know, right. considering it's that old. Holy shit, they found it. <laughs> Egypt ar- archaeologists uncover complete Roman city. What? These Romans, they, they just everywhere. never took a day off. No. Jesus, every day, put on your sandals, we're walking somewhere else. <laughs> oh, my God. Let's they're in Norway, them. they're in Ireland, they're... <laughs> Egyptian archaeologists said Tuesday they discovered an 1,800-year-old complete residential city from the Roman era in the heart of the city, in the heart of the southern city of Luxor. Also a casino, my friend Caratop has a permanent show at Las Vegas, Nevada. (laughs) Like I was like that. (laughs) This city, dating to the 2nd and 3rd centuries, is the oldest and most important city found in the eastern bank of Luxor, according to Mustafa Waziri, head of Egypt's Archaeologists, uh, they also discovered a number of residential buildings as, two, as well as two pigeon towers, a structure used to house pigeons or doves, and a number of metal workshops. Inside the workshops, they found collections of pots, tools, bronze and copper Roman coins. Wow. They found temples and tombs, too. too. In 2021, they announced the discovery of a 3,000-year-old lost golden city on Luxor's West Bank. When the, with the archaeological team calling it the largest ancient city ever uncovered in G- Egypt. I mean, they just keep finding. Wow. <laughs> when I went with, to, to Rome, when I took my mom and my sister went and all that, I said, let's go to old Rome. Mm-hmm. If you go there, it's like the first, you know. Mm-hmm. My sister's like, it's just a bunch of rocks. <laughs> <sighs> I'm like, I'm never going on vacation with you again. Never. Then she tried to tell me that the Coliseum never had gladiators. I'm like, I can't stay on this vacation. I'm leaving you. Right. You and mom can do that, and me and Rose, the neighbor, are going over here. We're good. Yeah, I'm not listening to this fake history. <laughs> well, I heard 
from my friend, Kim and Salsa, <laughs> that that never even happened, Kathleen. Yeah. That was all made up. They didn't do that. <laughs> they right. did do it in other cities. Right. I'm like, she had a whole story about it. I'm like, oh, my God. Um, okay, now we're moving on to news. Um, no, this is good news. Health good news. Mm-hmm. As I take a drink of my beer. Drinking up to two cans of beer or glasses of wine may lower your risk of self- suffering from dementia. Yay! Yay! <laughs> uh, researchers Excellent. in South Korea analyzed health data for more than 4 million people in the country who were tracked for up to eight years. Right. This was not a bullshit study. This right. was not just a weekend thing. <laughs> Eight years. Those who had one can of beer, one glass of wine, had a 21% lower risk of dementia compared to non-drinkers, while those who had two daily drinks had a 17% lower risk. But anyone consuming ha- alcohol in higher amounts, three or more, had an 8% higher risk. Hmm. Boo. What was that? Boo. But now you know. If you believe the South Koreans, why not? Then the rest of this article gets super hard. Hard. (laughs) It's very sciencey. We don't need to read all that. Just know that the South Koreans, if you believe in them, and they believe in you, two beers, two glasses of wine a day, you're good to go. Um, What next? Let me see what next. So many things. Um, The super yacht. Let's talk a little bit about live golf. Now, I know a lot of people don't care about sports, so I will make this short and painless, okay? Um, Oh, yeah, that one. Oh, my God. Yes, that one. (laughs) Oh, the feel-good story this week is going to blow your mind. It's mind-blowing. Is it about puppies? It is about a dog. No way, It's not about a puppy, but about a dog. Um, So, if you don't follow golf, I'll catch you up so you feel like you're in the know. There's the PGA Tour. That is what we have had forever. Jack Nicholas, Arnold Palmer, all these guys spent their careers trying to form a tour. Blah, blah, blah. Greg Norman has always had been very angry at the PGA Tour for reasons I really, truly don't understand. He's the Australian guy called the Shark. Yep. He, my sister had a poster of him on her wall. She was madly in love with Greg Norman. I was more of a Raymond Floyd person. I like Gretzky. And you like Wayne Gretzky, who is oh. not a PGA <laughs> golfer, but <laughs> that's golf. fine. He, you, he does he golf. Does. Yes, and apparently he's quite good yeah. from what I hear on the celebrity <laughs> tournament gossip thing. Um, and Greg decided that he would form a separate tour and he would go get all of his money from uh, the guy who bone sawed and dextered the American journalist Jamal Kosoji. Mm-hmm. I can't say his name. Kosoji. And so that's MBS, yep. uh, the Saudi Arabian prince or king or whatever. I don't know. But he took all of his money from him. All of it. That's where all the money came from. So a lot of people are saying it's blood money. This guy bone sawed. But Greg does have an argument. Well, you know, all kinds of other sports are taking money from this guy. Um, Football, uh, meaning soccer, European soccer teams, they're letting the Saudis own things, and they call it sports washing, whatever the case. I say, okay, Greg, if you want to start your thing, go ahead. If the golfers choose to leave the PGA Tour, though, I say, bye-bye, chicken pie. You're not, we're not doing both. Right. Because they, they think they have a right. It's always amazing to people when people go, I have a right to do that. No, you, it's a privilege. Right. You, we, I have a party. Mm-hmm. I'm inviting you to the party. Yep. But there's a dress code, let's say. That's an example. Okay. If you don't want to wear those clothes, mm-hmm. great. You can't come to my party. Right. That's okay. Yeah. So we're all even. And it's 80 cents then. Because it'd be like saying we're going to create another football league in Europe at the same time as the NFL, mm-hmm. and you're going to play both, mm-hmm. and then you're going to fly. No. no. Y- you sign a contract with this tour. Exactly. That's just my belief. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't care if they go do it. Right. You take your I don't know how your karma. But it's not even real golf. It's like, it's like exhibition golf. It's like instead of having a real tournament, there's no cuts. They play on teams. It's like when I play in a charity thing. Yeah. It's exactly that. All they're missing like is shots of alcohol on each hole, which they probably, uh, which they probably have yeah. by now. Yep. Um, yeah. So if you want to go get their autograph or see them, 
go ahead. But they're going to fade into obscurity because they don't have a TV contract until they just got one with the CW. And I'm like, wait, <laughs> that is still a channel? Are you kidding me? I remember when the CW like came out and we were all like, what's that? But it was shows like Gilmore Girls, One Tree Under. Am I saying that right? No, One Tree Hill. One Tree Hill. One Tree Under. <laughs> oh. mm. Dawson's Creek. I'll never forget when Tom Cruise on Oprah said, I love Katie Holmes. I love Dawson Creek. Right. He didn't even say it right. Even I knew. I'd never yeah. seen the show before. I'm like, no, no it's Dawson's, right? Yeah. Did did her fiance just pronounce her show wrong? Because he's a fake fiance. <laughs> because he is a fake fiance. Um Live Golf CEO, Saudi Arabian killing CEO, Live Golf CEO on, he's speaking on the Saudi Arabian killing of Khashoggi. Look, this is Greg Norman. I think everybody learns from their mistakes. Mm -hmm. Mistake! No. no, they did not think it was a mistake. No. They intended to lure the man into the building, and then they dextered his ass. Yeah. And I think they're very happy with the result. Exactly. Yeah, the, a mistake is I didn't intentionally mean something, and it caused something horrible. Right. This, he said, uh, Look, I think everybody learns from their mistakes, Norman said. Um, when pressed by Abrams on whether he thinks the Saudis specifically have done so, um, he said, yes, I do. He said that he had been in Saudi Arabia building a golf course before becoming the CEO of Live Golf, which he said was way before any of this hoo-ha-ha -ha erupted. He calls the bone saw murder of an American the hoo-ha-ha. -ha. Wow. He said the Saudis see that golf is a force for good. At the Meanwhile... The, the, the give no rights to women. It's a force for money they're, laundering. They're, it, they're right. Sports washing. Sports washing. The, the Saudis, the women have no rights. Right. If you took woman and said that was black people or Jewish people or any other group, the yeah. world would be... Upside down. Uh, oh, they'd be outraged. But yeah. because it's chicks, it's just us. Yeah. Well, man, it's part of your religion, you know? I'm sorry. Sorry you can't drive, Kathleen. Sorry, sorry you can't own shit without bringing schmucky along here to sign for you. Mm -hmm. right. They don't even talk about that. No. Um, golf diplomacy is something I've been extremely passionate about for more than a quarter of a century, Norman said. The financial support from Saudi Arabia, whose government has been documented to commit human rights abuses for many years. Amnesty International has noted that the Saudi regime uses torture as punishment, severely restricts free, free speech, and does not allow protests, and has overseen many arbitrary arrests. Controversy surrounding the regime reached, released, reached a new level when Khashoggi, a columnist for the Washington Post who'd been critical of the Saudi regime, was killed in the Saudi embassy and taken out in trash bags, by the way. Yeah. Anybody yeah. care? No. no. U.S. intelligence and other, they concluded that the Saudi regime, specifically Saudi crown prince, right, he's a prince, I got mm -hmm. that right, Mohammed bin Salam, Salam Salman, 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 yeah. MBS, yeah. way easier, mm -hmm. was responsible uh, Norman defended Liv's golf ties to say Saudi Arabia, saying that people should look how the country is changing its cultures and noting we've all made mistakes. Guess what I've never done, Greg? Bone sawed somebody in my house and put them in trash bags. Right. Matter of fact, how many people have I met in my life? Many. Probably a million. Yep. I I, as far as I know, None. nobody's ever done it. Nope. So I don't, whatever. You guys want to take money from the devil? Go for it. But. Do I think they should be allowed to play on the PGA Tour? No. no. That does not include the British Open, the U.S. Open, the Masters. Because <laughs> those are not part of the PGA Tour. Right. So that's individually up to them. Yeah, but it's... They'll make the decisions. But here's the other thing. I don't think, I don't think they're going to play very good because they're not playing real golf. They're not playing every week. They're not playing every week. It's like not going on stage. If you don't go on stage for a year, you know, you're rusty as shit. It's going to take some time. Do you guys have $1,800 for an hour of consulting? Any oh. of you? Changing subjects. Guess who? Guess who's charging 1800 bucks an hour for consulting? Ooh. Fire Festival Billy McFarlane. Stop it. No. Oh, my God. You know what, though? Wow. Here's what I'll say for Billy. He is ferreting out the morons. <laughs> if somebody is willing to pay this idiot, that's how much he's charging for a phone call, a one-hour phone call. Billy McFarland thinks an hour of his valuable time is worth $2,000. This is the fire Festival guy, in case you guys forgot. The convicted con man, he spent time in jail. He had nothing but time on uh, his time while spending four years in prison for bilking investors out of $26 million. Recently launched a new scheme that offers advice to tech entrepreneurs 
for a mere $1,800. The consulting fee is one of the services provided by Pirate. P-Y-R-T. Pirate. Pirate. It's, uh, they promise to deliver a virtual reality-empowered experience where users can beam themselves onto a tropical island from the comfort of their home and control what happens there. Or I could just go there right. when I'm on vacation. Hello, Jamaica, here I come. $1,800. I just, that just makes me laugh. Wow. Come on, this can't be real. Somebody on TikTok said, being straight out of prison and walks to the next hustle. Yes, that's yeah, what they yeah, do. They're yeah. hustlers. They're con men. Exactly they're not fraudsters. Nope. They're thieves. And yeah. the thieves keep stealing. Because yep. <sighs> he gets off on it. It's not that he needs it. I mean, he may now. He may need it now. Right. Moving on. <laughs> just, I'm just saying, guard your pocketbooks, right. people. Don't give that man eighteen hundred dollars an hour. Right. You could call me and I'll talk to you for nothing. I probably have something better to say than him. Not a lot, right. but something better. Um, this made me laugh. <laughs> so, I do love Ozzy Osbourne. Yep. I love Crazy Train. It's probably one of my favorite songs of all time, yeah. rock wise. Uh -huh. But I also, full disclosure, love the voice of the man from the Scorpions. What? I do. I love that guy's voice. Wow. It's just That's a some of the cla the hard rockers, the cla metal guys or whatever, like that Scorpion guy's voice is just, it's untouchable. I love it. I don't even know the man's name. Oh, my God. Um, what was their big song? Rocky Like a Hurricane. I didn't like that one. Um, Made them change. Huh? Change? I don't know. But I love Ozby, Ozzy. And I even like the show The Osbournes. I thought it because I like him so much. Okay. And I like Sharon. She seems fine. Klaus Miney. Klaus Miney? Yep. <laughs> Born in 1948. Born in 1948? Where, yeah. where, where? Hanover, Germany. Germany? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Klaus Miney. Who knew that's Klaus one of my favorite all time singers? They've had two Klaus more. Miney. Two more. What were their big hits? I know Rocky Like a Hurricane. I didn't like that song. One, two, three. I don't even know. Hair Band. I yeah. Know, I love that. See, De definitely Leopard. Leopard was okay, but that guy's voice wasn't anything oh. like the Scorpion guy. Oh, yeah, it is. No. Yeah, come on. No. Early Bon Jovi. So good. Bon Jovi. Guns N' Roses? Come on. Um, Let me, yeah. Let me Google the Scorpion. Axel Rose's voice was as good as the Scorpion yeah, guy. It was amazing. What's the Scorpion's hit? Um, the best of the Scorpions. Yes. Far away. Right. I'd have to yeah. hear it. <laughs> Keep going. We can't play it. You know what? We I'm, I'm going to listen to it and sing it for you guys yeah. next week. <laughs> Rocky Like a Hurricane. The Zoo. The Zoo. Yeah. I got to go listen to these. Loving You Sunday Morning. Loving You Sunday Morning. Of course, Class Mommy wants to love you on Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> of love. All right. Change. When to Change. Yeah. That's the one I probably like. I gotta, I'm got i going to go listen to it after this. I'm going to sing it next week. Big City Nights. Big City Nights. I gotta listen. All right, I love Cheap Trick. You love what? Cheap Trick. Cheap Trick. Yeah, yeah so every single song. Yeah, was great. You can name twenty of them. They're like a true though band. Yes. Like, and they weren't really a hair band. They were a rock band right out of the Midwest. Boom, Boom. coming at you, yes. and they know you can't let up, or somebody's gonna start throwing shit at you. <laughs> they know. They're super aware. That's how I feel about being on stage. People are like, why don't you stop? Why don't you talk so fast? Because I don't want time for somebody to be able to say something. I don't want to get in a fight. Well, when you do a lot of one-nighters, you learn all that shit. Make the, make the slow people keep up. This is, a, this is a class for the smart kids. 26 craziest things Ozzy Osbourne ever did. Now, reading some of these, I didn't know. Maybe I wouldn't have had my love for Ozzy. But he was super drunk or super on drugs. So, you know. Yeah. Now that he's not on all that, I think he's super sweet. I see the sweet side. Okay. And I just love that he went with the Prince of Darkness. Me and my cousin Tommy, mm -hmm. we were all in with Ozzy. Really? Yeah. Like everybody else was kind of more Bon Jovi y. And me and Tommy were like, no, the Prince of Darkness is coming to St. Louis. We're oh fucking God. going. <laughs> he's from Mars. <laughs> Ozzy Osbourne. And it's so sad he's got to retire. He's sick. He's got a lot of problems. He's cool. And he was going to, he wanted to keep going, but he's got back issues and Parkinson's. I don't know what the whole list is, but it's a lot. Um, wow. Here's the craziest things he ever did. <laughs> this is one through 13. Okay. Arrested and convicted for burglary. What? 
Yeah, he must have been like 11 because right. this starts way back. Oh, my God. Uh, number two, Ozzy took revenge on teacher. Let me, I don't really understand. Okay, here we go. This is better. That sounds like a no, 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 I got the real thing. Okay. Born in 1948, he graduated high school in 15. They graduate younger in the UK than the US. Before Ozzy turned 18, he was arrested and convicted for burglary and sentenced to three months in prison. Wow. He had to do the time because his father refused to pay the fine. My dad would have made us sit there. Uh-huh. No question about it. Well, maybe not the girls. Clearly he missed the lecture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It didn't work making him sit there. He didn't think about shit. No. He just thought about what he's going to do when he's get out. Number two, he gets revenge on his teacher. While still in school, Ozzy's metal shop teacher, Mr. Lane, often punished Ozzy by slapping him on the ass with a piece of wood. To get even, Ozzy liked to heat up a penny for three or four minutes, then slip it into Mr. Lane's desk. At some point, Mr. Lane... Out of would pick up the penny out of curiosity and burn his fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Ozzy would get a good laugh. Wow. Wow. That's wow. 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 Number three, Ozzy worked at a slaughterhouse. While still a teenager, Ozzy got a position in a slaughterhouse. His job was to kill cows. Whoa, listen to this. His job was to kill cows by shooting them in the head with a gun that fired a steel spike. Holy shit. (laughs) And he's a teenager, and you wonder why he becomes the Prince of Darkness? You're making him shoot cows? He's he's a crazy person. (laughs) Well, number four. While singing with Earth, the band that would eventually become Black Sabbath, Ozzy, in an effort to always play the clown, would do just anything to get the audience's attention. One One time he found some purple paint backstage and covered his nose with it. Unfortunately... The paint was indelible, and it didn't wear off for six weeks. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my. Number five, uh-huh. Ozzy's hotel was invaded by Satanists. While on the road with Black Sabbath in the early 70s, the hotel where the band was staying was invaded by Satanists. Some who'd camped out in front of Ozzy's hotel room. To get rid of these fanatics, Ozzy blew out their candles and sang happy birthday to them. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one time Nick Schwartz had told me, the comedian Nick Schwartz and who I love, he w- he had his bus out somewhere and he's like, he's like, yeah, but Kathleen, like your fans are normal people. He goes, mine just aren't normal. He said like Friday night there were a bunch of them dressed like wizards and they had crystal balls and they were outside the tour bus going, Nick, we know you're in there. Oh my God. Come out. <laughs> And I said, but I know Nick could go out there because he probably think they had good stuff wow. of some sort. Um, number six, drove drunk to the hospital. When Ozzy's first wife, Thelma Riley, began giving birth to Ozzy's first child, Jessica Starshine Osborne, Thelma insisted he drive her to the hospital. Trouble was, Ozzy was drunk and he didn't have a driver's license. Didn't care. Drove her anyway. Um... Uh, Number seven, used penicillin to cover up his affairs. At the end of his tour in 1972, he had been sampling groupies for months, got a blast of penicillin before re- returning home to the missus. Wow. Wow. Um, I didn't like this one. He shot a bunch of cats. That's not nice. He shot cats? Yeah, he was completely drunk, he said. He really regrets it. Um, he got... Uh, oh, God. Yeah. They had a lot of new cars, but the cars had all these scratches on it. And then he discovered his stray cl- cats were climbing on it. One night, he was super, super drunk, um, and he whipped out his shotgun. Oh, God. Yeah. Number nine, he accidentally drugged a vicar. Oh, wow. What's a vicar? Like a senator? No, a vicar's uh, like a priest. Like a priest? Yeah, I don't know what it is. One day, the vicar paid the Osbournes a visit. Ozzy is a member of the Church of England. Thelma yeah. inadvertently gave the priest a piece of of cake that Ozzy had laced with some potent Afghan hash. Soon the vicar <laughs> the vicar passed out, and they had to carry him home. For three days, the vicar was was ripped. And unfor- and fortunately for the Osbournes, he didn't remember what happened to him. Ten, on a flight home from oh England, God. Ozzy was carrying four grams of cocaine in his sock. Worried about taking the dope through customs, Ozzy gave the coke to the... Uh, Flight attendant who snorted the stuff while still working on the plane. Wow. Good job, kids. <laughs> Eleven. Oh, my God. He set chickens on fire in a fit of rage. Thelma, in an effort to keep Ozzy from partying all the time, 
bought him a chicken coop filled with chickens, but he hated chickens and he hated feeding them. One night, while drunk, he took his shotgun in the chicken coop and began shooting the birds. Uh, they, oh, he's, then he set fire to it into the flames and he threw live shotgun carriages into the flames. Oh my God. Wow. wow. Yeah, now if I didn't own these things, I'd have been like, that's not very nice. Even if you're drunk, I wouldn't kill an animal. Right. Mm. Right. Well, no, I wouldn't. There's even even a possum. They eat ticks. You got to find something good in all the animals, and so that's what Saint Francis of Assisi would tell you. Twelve, Oz used to drift in public one night during the Blizzard of Oz tour in Germany. I remember that. What a great name, the Blizzard of Oz. While dining with some straight lace folks, Ozzy climbed onto the table and began doing a strip tease. Once naked. He urinated into a man's carafe of wine. Afterwards, he wasn't invited back to Germany for many years. <laughs> I'm sure they're like, the this man is crazy. What is he doing? What is the matter with him? Wow. We are drunk too, but we are not doing this. We are not. 13, he bit the head off a dove. I read about that. Okay, look. Yeah, that was kind of weird. I've been super bored in meetings in Los Angeles. So bored that like... I don't know. I drift out and, like, I can't even come back. I'm so far gone. Right. Till somebody just hands me a bottle. All I try to do is get free Fiji water out of those meetings. Right. I just, like, they're like, do you have any water? I'm like, do you have Fiji? It's my favorite. It's $19. I can see getting super bored. I've been there. But this is crazy. During a meeting at CBS Records, Ozzy, then a solo artist, in order to intimidate the public relations people, pulled out a dove of his pocket bit its head off, and threw it on the table where it twitched about spit, spilling blood and feces everywhere. Oh. Somebody shouted, get this animal out of here. Now, which one? Then they threw Ozzy from the premises. Um, and then there's some stupid ones. Bit the head off the dead bat. But this was a mistake. And I'll never forget, because the Midwest, we thought we were so famous because it was in Des Moines. So Missouri kind of, we feel like we round up to (laughs) Iowa. Iowa rounds down to us. It's all fine. During one performance, somebody in the audience threw something at Ozzy. He thought it was a rubber bat, so he picked it up and chomped it down. Realizing something was wrong, he spit out a live bat. He then had to get rabies shots. How did somebody, this is this just tells you how, when we were young, how lack of security there was anywhere. Somebody just walked in with a live bat in their pocket. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, I remember this. He, he, it says 16, took a piss on the Alamo. While touring the te- San Antonio, Texas, he got drunk one night. And Sharon, the one we know as his wife, took, took Ozzy's clothes, hoping to keep him in the hotel and out of trouble. Oh, um, here's what I don't do with a drunk. Take, put them naked and hope that makes them stay. Right. <laughs> right. They don't care. No. No. Oh, God. <laughs> wow. But Ozzy donned one of Sharon's dresses and took a walk. He found one of her dresses. Later, while still dressed in her dress, he took a leak on the walls of the Anim- uh, Alamo Historical Na- Na- National Monument where the cops oh, busted him. Yes. It was decades yeah. before he was allowed. So at this point in his life, he can't go to Germany or <laughs> San Antonio. And then there's just a bunch of stupid one. Um, he got thrown out of a concentration camp. I mean, come on. Ozzy. He got back to Germany. Thank God. And he was seeing the sights, and he may have been the only person thrown out of Dachau concentration camp. He was drunk. I don't know what he said or did. This one is insane. <laughs> We're almost done. Good. Surfed atop an aerial t- tramway, this time in Albuquerque, New Mexico, while drunk and coked out of his head. Ozzy took a ride in an aerial tramway. When the vehicle suddenly stopped a thousand feet up, Ozzy took a ladder to the roof of the vehicle, lifted the hatch, and climbed on top of it. Oh then God. the thing started moving again. Ozzy rode on top, his arms wide, as if surfing in Malibu. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> uh, I'm, okay. skip- I'm skipping a bunch. Uh, during. 2002 when the Osbournes was one of the first TV reality shows, which, my friend, Jeff Stilson, yay, yay, Jeff Stilson, was a big part of that. Um, he was taking as many as 25 Vicodin pills per day. Ozzy was. Really? And this was as many as 42 different prescription drugs he consumed on a daily basis. Wow. Uh-huh. That's crazy. 
Well, this just shows you guys, if you want to do all these drugs and shit, you, you, you can, and you might live, but your old age is going to be miserable. It's going to, yeah. the, the bill will come due. I mean, it's not a good ending. Um, he did throw a 50 inch TV set through the ninth floor window of a hotel and let it fall to the pavement. It's something Ozzy had always wanted to do. <laughs> really? <laughs> Can't say the urge has ever struck me. Thanks, buddy. When the TV set hit the ground, it exploded like a nuclear bomb. He was charged $38,000 for the destruction of the television. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, there's some bad things in there. Mama, I'm coming home. I love that song. I love so many of his songs. Um, he just seems like when he's not on drugs and he's not drunk, I like he has a very good sense of humor. He's a funny guy. Not necessarily intentionally. He's silly. He's, really, yeah. he's very goofy. Seems to love his kids. And... He's done bad things to Animal, but I can forgive it now because he has all those little dogs that were in the reality show and he loves each and every one of them. I think he's come around. I think he did something with ASPCA too. He probably has done ASPCA. He should do them if he has not to try to... Um... Okay. I think it's time for the feel-good story. Okay. Um, let me find it. This is such a feel-good story. These are the things that you go, okay. A dog was lost for 36 hours. 36 hours. Then it rang an animal shelter's doorbell. The Animal Rescue League of El Paso sounded the alarm on its Facebook page. Bailey was missing. And its locals needed to keep an eye out and notify the shelter if she was spotted. Bailey looks like a a mutt, 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 shepherdy, giant smile, but not all shepherd. Many other things. Her ears go down. Not like a shepherd. Just your regular old furry kind of lab, shepherd, mix, mutt-ish. People soon called in. Others joined the research team. Her owner scoured the city deep into the night, all for naught. Bailey remained on the loose at the risk of being run over, ravaged by an animal, or falling prey to some un- unknown horror in un- the unforgiving West Texas desert. Then deep into the second uh, night, night? I don't know, I'm missing a sentence here, sorry. Uh... Her doorbell, this is the doorbell uh, of the shelter. Her doorbell camera cameoed, ended a 36-hour search for a dog that did not need to be rescued. Bailey knew where she was going and traveled 10 miles to get there. But now she faced an obstacle she could not overcome. Without a key or a a opposable thumb, she needed someone to let her in. She had been rescued by this, out of this place. Uh This person, um, I'll explain it too, she had been taken back because she kept, running away. Mm-hmm. She wasn't a very well-behaved little guy, girl. <laughs> and um, But she ran from the person who rescued her 10 miles back to here. Okay. Um, with, she needed someone to let her in. Bailey first came to the Animal Rescue League of El Paso more than a year ago. After housing her for a few months, another at shelter transferred her to the Rescue League in the hopes that higher foot traffic w- would lead to her adoption. She's super cute, too. Mm-hmm. She doesn't look menacing or nothing like that. She's a- adorable. Despite the boost... Bailey languished at the Rescue League for more than a year because of some of the quirks that were not easy for people to overcome, including being hyper, undrained, and a bit of an escape artist, according to League Rescue Director Loretta Hyde. She spent most of her life in the shelter, adding that Bailey took an obedience course during her time at the Rescue League. Um, Bailey's quirks bubbled up after she was adopted a few months ago, Hyde said. Her new owner returned her, returned her three days later on because Aww. Bailey escaped from her crate and destroyed a piece of artwork. About a month later, a second owner adopted her. He had already he already had a feral dog and had painstakingly tra- that he had painstakingly trained trained for a year. After a few visits to make sure the two got along, he brought Bailey into the fold, taking the two dogs with him every day to his job training, teaching, and competing in martial arts. All was going well until around noon on January 29th when Bailey slipped her owner's grasp as he tried to fit her for a new harness and she bolted. She, he chased her on foot and then by car, but she eluded both efforts. So he called the shelter, which put out an urgent, uh, alert, an urgent alert on his Facebook page uh, that night, informing its 33,000 followers that Bailey was on the loose and asking them for any sightings. There were over... There were at least three over the next 30 hours, six hours, but none panned out. By the time the shelter workers arrived at each location, she was already gone. She was running away. One of the shelter's employees was at home in bed and nearly asleep when she heard a loud ding from her phone. The noise meant there was someone pushing the shelter's ring doorbell. Oh, my God. But it was 1.15 in the morning. 
No one would be there this late, she thought, think she, thinking maybe she was dreaming. And then a second ding, and finally a robotic voice emanated from the phone. Someone is at your door. Annoyed, she got up to check. She opened the Ring app, which showed the image of the late-night caller with two beady eyes glowing into the dark. Oh. Then the animal's full body came into, few, my, into view. Oh, my God, I thought, is that Bailey? She ran to her daughter's room. Genevieve also worked at the shelter, and she wanted her opinion. They unmuted the doorbell's microphone so they could speak with the dog outside of the shelter. Bailey, Bailey, is that you? Her head popped up to fill the entire screen, followed by whining and scratching at the door. Her and her daughter hopped in the car and headed to the shelter. They drove... Um, why well, they kept talking to the dog on the phone while they drove, so oh, she wouldn't wow. eat. Mm-hmm. It took them 15 minutes to get there. When they did, Bailey was ecstatic. Ariada secured her in the harness and led her into the shelter. Bailey muscled her way back into the kennel where she had lived more than a year. They fed her and let her rest. Later that morning, they notified her owner that the dog found safe. Hyde said she gave him a bit of a scolding when he arrived, telling him to be more careful. They yelled at the adoptee guy. Hey, you know what? Yeah. He's willing to take her. He's willing right. to work hard. Yeah. How about say, sorry she got away from you? Yeah. Yeah. He thing. agreed to walk her using two leashes and get a collar outfitted with the tracker. We're just lucky that she made it across all these super busy streets and not get smushed. She has some street smarts as well. Um, during her trip, she traveled 10 miles, crossing over a main drag in El Paso and Interstate 10. That is not a highway to mess with. That's a very big uh, interstate. Uh-huh. To somehow find her way back to the shelter. She lived at the shelter for so long, this was home to her. So, isn't that a nice story? That's great. Yeah, Bailey's okay. fine. Yep. Bailey is fine in El Paso. <laughs> okay, termites. Um, I, well, I'm going to say it, because by the time I get back, it'll already be done. Yep. What are you doing for Valentine's Day? For Valentine's Day, I'm sneaking down to Atlanta to go see one Miss Anita Baker. <laughs> She does not know yet. I will let her know that tomorrow. I always think if it's show days, I just, I like it when people say the day of the show, bought tickets, will be there tonight. If you're busy, no worries. Mm -hmm. If you're not, we'll have a beer. Whatever. Um, I'm very excited about that. Will you bring me a t-shirt? I will bring you a t-shirt. Thank you. I'll have Dorf buy it. (laughs) (laughs) Dwarf gets bored a lot, so I'm always just like, go buy shirts. <laughs> I'll just go do it. <laughs> hey, we'll do it. Hey, we'll do it. Um, Where are you going? What's this weekend? This weekend is the Ryman. Boom. Nashville. There's still a few, There's still a few t- seats left. And here's the thing. People, because I go to shows at the Ryman, too. I yeah. mean, I know what it's like to be a customer. They don't necessarily want the wing things, um, but I've sat in those wings, and they're fine. Yeah. Especially for comedy. Yeah, great. You don't really... It's not, I don't know. Comedy to me, if you can hear me, I always look up. I make sure I look everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm cognizant that some people's seats aren't directly in front of me. Um, There's not a bad seat in the Ryman. It's a giant church. I mean, it's a giant pews, old school. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. And uh, they make you your own little poster. It's a a very special gig. There's like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. the, The agents call them marquee gigs. I would call them marquee gigs. Yeah. There's probably five a year. Mm-hmm. Chicago Theater. Yeah. You know, the big historical. The Warner, D.C. The Warner, D.C. Yeah, well, there's a lot. Once yeah. I start thinking about it too yeah, hard. There's a, lot of them. there's a lot. Yeah, but the Ryman is in and of its own category. Because yeah. it's where the Grand Old Opry used to be. Mm-hmm. And they moved it. But the church pews, I mean, there's nowhere else that I do shows like it's that. Magic. And the sound, mm-hmm. if you just stand there on stage. I don't know. Comedians don't really care about sound. We just need the volume loud. Mm-hmm. But we don't sit there like bands and do sound checks and hear. We don't hear weird shit. We right. just it's just your voice. But we we don't have the intricacies and and it's so complicated for music. It seems to be. I don't know. It's not for us. Just here's my voice. Make it loud. Right. You could stand there on that stage without a mic and be fine. Right. The acoustics are so because when they built it, they didn't have mics. Right. So they had to go. Okay. Uh, but how did they know all that back then? I have no idea. Anywho, I will see you termites, and then after the Ryman, New Orleans, New Orleans yes. and we added a second show yes. for the vampire people. Yes, <laughs> Trey Mahoney of what? Mary Mahoney's is my favorite restaurant in the entire United States. Seriously, the crab claws there are just. Trey sent me some from for Super Bowl because I I asked. I've never asked before. 
I felt stupid asking because it's probably a pain in the ass to mail. But he did it. So and good. the gumbo. So good. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, New Orleans. That's that. technically in mm-hmm. Biloxi, but yeah. he's coming yeah. to New Orleans. Yeah. I have a lot of friends coming to that show, which would be fun. Red um, Bank. Red Bank. Huntington. Huntington. I think those are almost sold out. Yeah. Memphis. If not already sold out. Mm-hmm. Memphis. Yeah, we need more people to come to Memphis because that was a we added that show late. It wasn't part of the normal schedule. Yeah. So Memphis. Memphisitos? Is that the show? What's the, what are those shoes called? Memphis. Mem- my mom loves them. I don't know. Um, Memphis, it's at a new place. I've never been. The Graceland Soundstage. Yeah, I don't even know. And then Milwaukee. Love, 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 love. You can find me at the Milwaukee Cheese Market. Thank you. It's called the Public Market. I call it the Cheese Market. Uh, Wausau. Wausau, Wisconsin. And Foxwoods. Foxwoods. That's sold out. Two Boston shows. We added a late show. Yep. We got tickets for that one. First one sold out. Super, yep. Yep. super duper fun. And, guess what and opening said? at the Ryman is Mr. Dusty Slay, yep. who is beyond a headliner in his own right. I yep. could not believe he was available, and I could not believe he said yes. I'm yep. so grateful and excited for my own self. Yep. He makes me laugh really hard. And yep. to be able to say, side, stand side stage and his joke about... He grew up like in a trailer and stuff. And he's a joke about all of his clothes had wolves on them. I, <laughs> the whole joke makes me laugh. <laughs> because like in Hillbilly Gas Station, there are, once you've heard his whole joke and stuff, but I thought it too, like in the Ozarks, why does everything have a wolf on it? Like we're not really, it's not Canada. No. Wolves aren't really a Missouri mm-hmm. or a Tennessee. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. So that's it, Terrence. All right. Uh, um, special Special comes out February 24th. Go. Okay, so I told you guys to watch Jan, J-A-N-N. I made Lou watch it. He's laughing so hard. So there's three seasons in America because it's a Canadian show. You have to have Roku. But now it's just an app because all my friends are like, oh, I used to have a Roku stick. No, 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 you don't need that. It's just an app. (laughs) Just download it, and it's free. And I'm telling you, I don't laugh at a lot of shit, but that show... I'm going to go back and watch season one because Lou was telling me stuff from season one I'd forgotten about because I, I just watched all of season three. So that's a little comedy tip. Maybe Jan will have your boyfriend Jan doesn't need Americans. She's got, if she wants a Canadian star, she knows how to pluck them out. Yeah. They've had Katie Lang and they all make fun of themselves. Yeah. Sarah McLaughlin's so yeah. funny. Yeah. Michael Buble <laughs> was off the charts funny. And then secretly they all make fun of Celine Dion. <laughs> <laughs> which I love because they know she's the only global star. <laughs> at least that's what they, at least, at least that's what they're saying. I think Michael and Jan and them might be more global than they think, but certainly Celine. Um, all right, termites. That's all I got. So you'd be good Valentine's, uh, as my friend would say, Valentine's <laughs> termites. And we're almost to spring. Yeah. St. Patrick's Day's coming. No, we're not there yet, though. Settle your termites down. You still got a couple more weeks of winter. <laughs> Hunker down. Although winter's not been not, not that bad. Not even in New York. I no. talk to Lou every day. Yep. Not in St. Louis. Not in Nashville. Mm-hmm. Been pretty mild. Mm-hmm. It's 62 degrees out today. Wow. Mm-hmm. Great. Night-night, termites.